Have you ever wondered if the magnesium that you're taking is actually working? My name is Jason, I'm a certified health coach, and I founded healthopsy.com. And today, I want to demystify magnesium and give you a couple tips on what the best forms of magnesium that you should be taking. All right, so I wanted to start off with the lower forms of magnesium being the less bioavailable and the cheaper ones. The first one is magnesium oxide. So what magnesium oxide is, is a magnesium from sea minerals or a seabed. And they actually are oxidized because the actual mineral, when it's processed, is oxidized because oxygen comes into, pro into the process of manufacturing the mineral. So what happens is, is this form of magnesium is very cheap, very easy to manufacture. It's in pretty much all multivitamins that are the cheaper multivitamins because it's a very, very, very inexpensive and readily available mineral that companies can get their hands on. The only problem with magnesium oxide is, is if you're taking, say, the RDA of 400 milligrams of magnesium, only 4% of that is actually getting absorbed into the body. So it's not really that bioavailable. And the problem is, is if you're taking 400 milligrams, you expect to get 400 milligrams. So that's a problem with magnesium oxide. Another problem is, is it's non-chelated. So chelated means that the mineral is bound to an amino acid. So your body recognizes it as a more bioavailable source to assimilate into the bloodstream and actually utilize that mineral. So magnesium oxide isn't really a good form of magnesium. I don't really suggest it, and that's why it's one of the lower forms of magnesium that I don't really suggest. The next is magnesium sulfate, commonly known as Epsom salt baths. Epsom salt is just magnesium sulfate crystals. It's not a very good form of magnesium. You can't really take it orally. I don't suggest you take it orally. Um, you can put it in a bath to alleviate some muscle cramps, but it's not the best form, so I don't really suggest you take it. I think we should look at other forms, which we're going to talk about next. All right, so let's talk about the next two forms of magnesium. I think both of these forms of magnesium are really good. They have their benefits. And the first is magnesium chloride. So what magnesium chloride is, is magnesium bound to chloride. And why magnesium chloride is really good is because it actually has a stability constant of zero. So it dissolves into water in the body, making it an ionic form. You're going to see magnesium chloride in a lot of liquid preparations of magnesium. This magnesium is really bioavailable. It assimilates in the body really well. The only downfall is it's not the best for muscle cramps, but it does have its purpose and you can find it in any supplement store. The next form of magnesium I want to talk about is magnesium citrate. So magnesium citrate is magnesium bound to citric acid. And the odd thing about this is magnesium and citric acid are opposing charges, meaning one is positive and one is negative, almost like a car battery. And it creates a gradient. And what a gradient is, is the space between the positive and negative charge. What magnesium citrate does really well is it draws water to the location where it is in the body. And it's usually used as a diuretic for constipation. You're gonna find magnesium citrate in a lot of these over-the-counter diuretic medications or supplements to pass um, you know, stool if you're constipated because it's in a heavy dose of magnesium citrate. Magnesium citrate is a great form of magnesium if it's used in the correct dosages. I suggest that you know, you can use it as a non-chelated form. It's not as a bioavailable as other forms of magnesium, but it's relatively inexpensive, and it actually has um, a really beneficial part in diffusing or getting rid of oxalates in the body. Oxalates are from almonds, spinach. They're found in a lot of leafy greens, and some people get joint pain from oxalates in the body. So um, citrate or citric acid will actually bind to those calcium oxalate crystals and get them out of the body. So it does have its purpose. I suggest that it, you, know, you can try it, see if your body adjusts well to it, but it is a fantastic form of magnesium.
All right, I want to talk to you about the next form of magnesium, magnesium glycinate. So magnesium glycinate is pretty much your standard chelated, meaning bound to an amino acid, supplement you're going to find in most magnesium chelated supplements is magnesium glycinate. Magnesium glycinate is magnesium bound to the amino acid glycine. And it has some special purposes that you can actually use this for certain things like um, sleep um, issues, insomnia, restlessness, anxiety, because glycine actually promotes a calming anti-anxiety effect. So I suggest taking magnesium glycine at nighttime. You know, split up your, your doses between another form of magnesium, take the magnesium glycine at night because of its calming and anti-anxiety um, benefits you're getting from this form of magnesium. The good thing about it is it's chelated. So that means your body's going to assimilate it rather quickly and you're going to get most of the magnesium that you're intaking through digestion into the bloodstream. So it's actually a really good form of magnesium. I suggest that you look into putting this into your daily regimen. Okay, so the next form of magnesium I want to talk to you about is magnesium malate. So magnesium malate is magnesium bound to malic acid. So mag magnesium bound to malic acid actually um, is assimilated into our body really, really well. And that's because malic acid is a byproduct of our energy production in our body. So when your body takes in um, your food sources from fats, carbohydrates, and proteins, your body's actually making malic acid. And this form of magnesium can really, really be beneficial to the mitochondria because there is studies proven that this type of magnesium will get into the cells. And the mitochondria actually need magnesium to produce ATP. ATP is the energy source for all of our cells. It's basically from the batteries, which are our mitochondria, producing this cellular source of energy for our cells. So you essentially need a form of magnesium in the process of making energy. And malic acid and the magnesium malate is actually the best form of magnesium to do this. It reverses the inhibition of glycolysis. It's great for muscle cramps. I personally recommend this for muscle cramps. If you take two to 300 milligrams of this, your muscle cramps are substantially less. The only problem with this magnesium, it actually gives you energy because of the magnesium getting into the cells and actually pushing the production of ATP. The next form of magnesium I want to talk to you about is magnesium ortate. So magnesium ortate is magnesium bound to auric acid. Um, so that acid is a heterocyclical acid. So it helps your body produce ATP and recycle ATP. Um, auric acid actually turns into beta alanine in the body. So what beta alanine is, is it's actually something that bodybuilders take to reduce lactic acid. And lactic acid is a byproduct um, of um, working your muscles basically, your body's need for energy and the demand for energy and the production of ATP, it'll produce ATP as fast as it can and um, it'll do that in a different cellular cycle than what your body would do when you're sedentary. And the problem with that is a byproduct is lactic acid. And lactic acid actually basically forms delayed onset muscle soreness. So when people work out or you do some physical activity and you get that muscle strain, lactic acid actually is produced from your muscles. Um, and well actually your cells in your muscles and that sort of so this type of magnesium actually is perfect for athletic performance or anyone that is looking to reduce their lactic acid buildup and it actually prevents um, muscle breakdown so this form of magnesium is, is really good it's, it's really expensive it's not widely used but I figured we'd talk about it today so at least you, you, you know about it Last form of magnesium I want to talk to you about is magnesium theronate. Magnesium theronate is a new form of magnesium or a newer form of magnesium and it has a lot of special advantages over all of the other magnesiums that we talked about. Magnesium theronate actually has the ability to pass the blood-brain barrier, making it a powerful nootropic and a really, really good form of magnesium for cognitive benefits. A lot of people are using this right now to boost their brain synapses and they're using it as a nootropic. 
The next form of magnesium is magnesium taurate. So it's magnesium bound in taurine. This is another amino acid. This is a great form of magnesium to alleviate stress and anxiety because it works on the, the GABA system. Um, so I would say if you need to calm down or relax, this is a good form. Not many people use it, but you could try it for that. And also it's a good reactive oxygen species scavenger um, in the white blood cells. So that is another great benefit of this magnesium and it's great for stress. I really hope this video helped you decide which form of magnesium will be right for you. If this video helped you out, hit that like button, that'll help me out. And also if you'd like to get notified on new videos that I'm going to make and to give you some more knowledge, hit that subscribe button. You can also find me at healthopsy.com. Thanks for watching.